Anomalies has been my home for the past 20 years and I have been studying elephants for the past 12 years. We notice a lot of conflict between people and elephants in this landscape. We thought we should actually address this as it is one of the prime conservation issues here. I first met Anand three years ago when I was working in BR Hills. He mentioned about a project he was thinking of starting which looked at interactions between elephants and people. It sounded really interesting, so I came here for a few days to take a look. I've been here since then. People are very tolerant of elephants. They actually love elephants. But what they fear is for their own safety, which is a legitimate demand. If you look at this landscape, people have been living here for the past 120 years. This may appear to be a long time to humans, but for elephants, it isn't much. They have seen the landscape changing from undisturbed forest to fragmented patches. 120 years is too short a time for elephants to adapt to such a dramatic change. We can't ask people to leave this landscape because they are dependent on tea and coffee plantations for their survival. At the same time, we cannot expect elephants not to come into plantation, not to use these plantation areas because it's part of their range, it's part of their home. So the only way is that how best that we can actually coexist with elephants. Here, the loss of life is the primary reason of conflict, which is very traumatic. We thought we really need to understand how these deaths occurred. So that's the most important. Under what circumstances a person died? 120 years ago, this area was covered in pristine rainforest. And then with human interference, this place was converted into tea and coffee plantations. This left behind small, tiny fragments of forest, which is still used by elephants. During the day when activity is quite high, the elephants prefer to stay within these forest fragments. And once the noise dies down after work, people also return back to town to do some purchases and things like that. And that is the time that elephants actually start moving out of these fragments to go to the next fragment. And they use these paths which is also used by the people. And on such occasions, it's all mostly a surprise encounter where people are not aware of where elephants are. And when they realize they are really close to elephants, it's too late. Similarly, the elephant is also a little scared. Out of self-defense, they charge if the distance is too close. And this is when people get killed. So there are about 39 people who lost their lives between 1994 and now 2013. And out of 39, 35 people did not know that they were elephants. So there was absolutely lack of information about elephant presence was the key reason. If they were informed, all these 35 people would have been served, would have been alive. We started tracking elephants in plantations to understand their behavior. Once we had an idea of their movement patterns, we began informing people directly. But we couldn't reach out to many people by this word of mouth method. When we were thinking of ways to be more effective, 
One of the managers of a tea estate came up with the suggestion of using cable TV to reach out to people. Many people were already watching Valpare television channel back then. So this was a great way of communicating elephant location information to all of them. Every day after 5 o'clock in the evening, we displayed a crawl with the locations of elephant herds. With these daily location updates, we were hoping that people wouldn't accidentally encounter elephants. The cable network was a good start, but over a period of time, people switched over to satellite television. The viewership for cable TV dropped. Luckily, at the same time, mobile phone connectivity in these hills began to improve. We noticed that everybody had phones, especially workers, particularly women. We thought this is the best way to reach out to people of Walparai. So we started exploring options. And one of the things we found and we thought could be useful to us was the bulk SMS service that was being provided. So we looked around and we found this uh, providers by name Gupshap Enterprises and they helped us set up an account and they taught us how this thing works. NCF has been working with all the TA state companies here for a long time. And uh, so we would go meet the managers, explain to them what was our intention of doing this. Give, they would give us an appointment where workers would assemble together at one place at a particular time every day for the weighing of the tea and things like that. So everyone were at one spot, so it was much easier for us to go there and talk to them, explain to them what exactly we're trying to do. At first, yeah, they were a little skeptical about it. They were like, who are these people? Why are they are taking our phone numbers? Will we be harassed by phone calls and things like that? We assured them that they will not receive any phone calls from us regarding this. It will just be SMS and it would be communicated to them via English and Tamil. So that was also one of their concerns. They're like, we don't know to read English, so what are you going to do about it? And we said, we will be sending it in Tamil as well. SMS வர்றதனால தான் எங்களுக்கு வந்து இப்ப யானையினுடைய மூமட்டே தெரியுது இல்ல மெசேஜ் வர முன்னாடி பாத்தீங்கன்னா எங்களுக்கு யானை எங்க நிக்குது அப்படிங்கறது ஒண்ணு எங்களுக்கு அவ்வளவுதான் தெரியலங்க SMS அலர்ட் அந்த மாதிரி எல்லா பிரிகாஷன்ஸ் முதல்லயே கொடுத்துடுறாங்க கரெக்ட்டா 5:30 க்கு எங்களுக்கு அது வந்திருது மெசேஜ் வந்திருது அப்ப நாங்க நைட் ஓட்றோம் நைட் ஓடும் போது இந்த இடத்துல எனக்கு யானை நிக்குது கொஞ்சம் பாத்து கவனமா போங்க சொல்லி மெசேஜ் வரனால எங்களுக்கு நல்ல ஒரு மெசேஜ் வந்தனால எங்களுக்கு நல்ல ஒரு திருப்திகரமா வண்டி ஓட்றதுக்கு ஒரு சந்தோஷமா இருக்கு இந்த SMS ஒரு சிஸ்டம் இருக்கறதனால உண்மையை சொல்ல போனால் ஒரே வரியில் சொல்லணும்னா நிறைய உயிர்கள் காப்பாற்றப்பட்டிருக்கு வி ரியலைஸ் தட் ஏர்லி இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் நெட்ஒர்க் வாஸ் சம்திங் தட் வாஸ் வெரி குரூஷியல் டு ஸ்டார்ட் அப் ஸோ வி லுக் டேட் வாட் ஆர் த வேஸ் தட் வி கேன் ஆக்சுவலி ரீச் அவுட் டு த பீப்புள் ஒன் வாஸ் த்ரூ லோக்கல் கேபிள் டிவி சேனல் த அதர் ஒன் வாஸ் த்ரூ பல்க் எஸ்எம்எஸ் ஸோ லுக்கிங் அட் தீஸ் டூ திங்ஸ் த கேபிள் டிவி சேனல் கவர்ஸ் ஃபார் த பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் ஆல்ரெடி அட் ஹோம் த பல்க் எஸ்எம்எஸ் இஸ் ஃபார் பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் ஆல்ரெடி ட்ராவலிங் but there are situations where the network fails there are situations where there is no network and if you look at it the number of deaths that have occurred most of them have occurred when people have been walking back home from the bus stops we thought okay why not have something that will immediately grab person's attention and we wanted to put it up in strategic locations which are targeted primarily for the people who walk from the bus stops back home we went around asking people what kind of visual clues could help them A watchman at the airport factory described an incident which inspired us to set up flashing lights as a warning system. This incident took place around 4 o'clock in the morning near the factory. One of the residents of Ayarpadi 
was returning home by bus. He got off and started walking down towards his house close to the factory. At the same time, the watchman also saw some elephants walking up towards the direction of this man. The watchman started flashing his torch to alert the person. On seeing the flashing light, the person realized that there were elephants close by and he turned around. Elephants walked up, crossed the road and moved away. If the watchman had not used his torch, there would certainly have been a fatal incident. After hearing this story, we realized that flashing lights could be a great way of warning people who did not have access to SMS network. Most of these fatal encounters that occurred happened when people were walking home from the bus stops. So we thought it would be good to have these lights put up in such locations where there is maximum visibility and it will benefit the people who are walking home. People returning home late at night could see these lights and take necessary precaution. These lights primarily mean to say elephants are within a kilometer radius and that is what we wanted the people also to realize. And it's a very simple system actually. It works via a GSM module. So it has a SIM card and you can register phone numbers to it about three numbers can be registered and what we thought was it should be it will be good if two people from the local community residing in that area the proactive people the ones who get information about elephants we wanted to select such people but we did not want to pick up those people we wanted the community the group itself the people living there to choose someone among them So within a month of installation of any of these lights, uh, they start doing it by themselves. Gradually, about 4-5 months down the line, they start taking it up completely by themselves. Now, in a year, maybe we just switch on the lights maybe 5 or 6 times in a year. In a fragmented landscape like Valparai, People and elephants have to live together. People are dependent on tea and coffee plantations for their livelihood. And at the same time, 80 to 100 elephants use this landscape. So there is no other choice other than coexisting with each other. We have done our best to bring down accidental encounters, which has been the biggest issue here. But there is still so much more to do. People of Valpara have a very simple lifestyle, so it's very important to have a very simple system which they can use easily and Bulk SMS initiative just does that. Because of this it gives them a my message attitude, so they are really in, in, into it where they share information among, with us as well as among their other uh, friends and family as well. The good thing about this project is that unlike most other conservation issues that many people address, here you get to see the result the very same day. By the end of the day, if no one is dead, if no damages are there, then it's a success that very day. So when I meet people on the road and when they, they ask for messages, when they want to register for it, it's a very assuring thing saying, okay, the system is working, people are really looking forward to this. It's a very satisfactory feeling that you get. There are no problem elephants in this landscape, but there are problem locations which would require a different approach to address the conservation issue on ground because coexistence is a journey, not a destination.
Thank you.